What's going on everyone? It's Wilson and I'm making a quick video to show you guys how I set up my Thinkorswim platform. Uh, I use this mainly as a charting tool. I trade on E-Trade um, and I love E-Trade Pro but um, it just didn't feel comfortable. So I tried out a lot of different platforms. I've tried out E-Trade Pro, I've tried out TC2000, I've tried out Stocks to Trade, uh, Thinkorswim, uh, Equity Feed, and uh, my most favorite of all time, it just goes back to Thinkorswim. As you saw in my other videos, I've been using E-Trade Pro, uh, but Thinkorswim just, everything about it is just perfect for me. So I love using it and I wanted to show you how I set up my charts, my watch list, and some of the settings that you can navigate on uh, Thinkorswim. So one of the things that you have to consider when you're choosing a charting platform is you want to know, like for example for me, I use Mac. Uh, I'm strictly an Apple guy. I love MacBooks. Uh, each time any one of my MacBooks run out, I buy a new one that's a MacBook. I'm not a big fan of Windows and that's a compatibility issue that you have to deal with. So for example, the interface for certain uh, Mac software just doesn't look as nice when it comes to charting and as well as a lot of uh, trading software just aren't compatible. For example, TC2000 only works for uh, like Windows. You know, they do say they have a Mac client, but I've never was able to get it working. Um, another trading uh, or, or charting tool that I use is uh, tradingview.com. So I like using that along with Yahoo Finance if I don't have my Thinkorswim platform open and it doesn't take that much memory. I just open up my browser, I type in, you know, Yahoo Finance and they have pretty good charts that you can set indicators on. But I use this mainly because it's an R one As you can see, I can see level twos on this Amazon stock right now. Um, I see the live news right here. I have my, uh, my volume scanner on the left right here, right below my watch list. Uh, I set multiple watch lists um, depending on, on what I'm trading. Like I have one for leverage ETFs. Uh, I have one just for swing trades. I have one for the momentum trades. And I like using the volume scanner because it's real time. And it tells me what is jumping. So I can try and get in a quick intraday, uh, midday trade for, for a pump that's upwards if I, if I see any things. I like the alert. I like how it plays the sound. Whereas for E-Trade Pro, it wasn't really playing me a sound. It was just like dude, dude, dude. And this one actually rings a tone. So I like that. And I like how the volume and interface look. And there's really no downside to using Thinkorswim. Another thing about Thinkorswim is that it's absolutely free and it's real time. Uh, most people, when you first sign up for an account, uh, unfortunately, you don't get real time data. Uh, and what you have to do is that you have to log into your TD America trade account and uh, actually apply for it. Uh, there, I made another video that you can look into if you look under my channel and you'll be able to find how to get the Thinkorswim uh, data real time for free. And again, this is a free charting platform. I think they provide more than enough value, but let's dive into some of the settings that we can use um, or that you can use to, to make it work for you. Like again, this is just my charting method. This is my style, my layout, you know, uh, do whatever works for you. So the first thing I do when I open up Thinkorswim is, of course, I like to use it for the watch list on the left right here. You can set whatever you like to add to your watch list and uh, Thinkorswim will save it automatically to your account. You can also access it on your mobile app. Um, and then I like to go to uh, studies because there's a couple studies that I always look into. For example, I like the EMA9, I mean, uh, the, the SMA9, um, and I like the SMA20 because it helps me identify, you know, how the stock is playing. I like using VWAP and I like using the RSI indicator to figure out if the stock is oversold or overbought. And uh, I love having my volume bars uh, within overlaying the chart, which I'll show you how to do later. But basically, if you go to studies right here, you can see there are a lot of studies that you can pick from, you know, you can pick from uh, like MACD, you know, a lot of traders use this, especially swing traders. You can look at what, what's going in with the momentum. You can see uh, some of the option deltas. Uh, it's such a robust platform. You can see the spreads. Again, you can just add it straight right here. Uh, I have my volume overlap, so that's why it says it's empty, but um, you can have a separate tab right down here for the volume. Uh, and on the bottom, I have the RSI. 
So that tells me if the stock is overbought or oversold, knowing when I can take my profits or when to get in actual trade. And same for these simple indicators such as VWAP, I use it to identify the support and resistance. Um, so after I go to studies, I like to uh, like to go into settings. So you just right click anywhere, and then if you go to style and you go to settings, <clears throat> uh, you can pretty much pick out whatever you want so you know like for for example for here you can do the studies on the chart uh, you know you can highlight this um, the main thing that I always do when I get into the setting the chart settings is I just go straight to appearance because uh, I like having it filled in of course it's just me I like having these candlesticks filled in and I like having my dojo to see if the stock is trading flat so I like my personal colors of course at the same time you can you know you can change the colors or you can choose not to fill and right here will show you a preview of how it will look like uh, some people prefer to fill it some people don't i like my back uh, the background of the chart black so it's easier for me to see the red and green uh, it just fits with my style and you, you can just go down here to background and you pick a color that works for you uh, if you don't like this color you can pick more and you'll be able to find it um, other things you can do is uh, the, the volume color, you know, some people like having the color as all blue, but I like to see how many buying volume there is and how many selling volume. So I just like to keep it as the uh, regular, regular ticker uh, color. So I know when people are buying and when people are selling when it comes to volume, which is super important to me. And personally, I prefer candlesticks, but you know, some, some experts like using line. I don't know why you would use it, but some people like doing that and some people like using bar, but for me, candle works really well. So you can do this. And then uh, another thing that you have to set is you have to go to the, um, the time axis area right here. And what this allows you to do is you can set the time intervals of how you want to analyze the stock. So you can set any custom ones that you like. And same for the price. Uh, the expansion area is what I like to use because I like to see the, the the top parts of the chart and the bottom part so I know the price range and that way I can set my alerts easily. Uh, but I like doing 30%. Some people don't like it at all. They, it just allows me to get more room and that's what I like. So uh, you can zoom in the charts. So uh, anything you see that's grayed out right here is the extended hours. Um, and I like to keep my extended hours available because it allows me to figure out how the stock is trading pre-market and I can look for a quick gap to get into, especially if the stock is gapping up. But um, you can zoom in in multiple ways. You can either use the zoom in button down here to zoom in, you know, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, or for me, I use my keyboard and I just uh, use the shortcut, which is control plus. So as you can tell, control plus zooms in and Control minus zooms out. And what I like to do for the time frame, the time axis I was talking about, you can customize your list to however you like it. But I do, I like looking at the, the five minute chart as well as the one minute chart. So at the intraday trades, when I'm really doing the momentum pushes, I like to do the one day, one minute. But when I want a clear picture, I might go for the five minutes. I might want to look back at the trends from three days or I might want to do like a 10 day to see the support and resistance of the entire stock along with the volume. So that's just the way I do it. Uh, I, do, I also really love Thinkorswim because of all these market watch as well as the scans that is available totally for free. So you don't need to pay like a hundred bucks a month for something like another software for this. But how I like to do it is right before the market opens, I just go to market watch and then um, I click down here, I go to lover and losers, and I like to see the pre-market movers, and it'll show that, and when, and I have to set to my own way, you can click on settings, right here, this little setting icon, you can customize it to however you like. I like having the mark percent change on there, I like having the mark, I like having the last, I wanna see the volume, and uh, I like to sort it out by just clicking um, on the mark change, so I can see which stocks are up, stocks are down pre-market which is super important to me and when I'm going for swing positions I like to see what are the uh, the analyst upgrades because those usually spike the stock um, and it's pretty good for riding the momentum riding the trend for a swing trade so that's what I use the market watch for 
uh, you know, you can also narrow it down based on industry. Like for example, we know healthcare was doing really well yesterday on the one day. So you can, you know, select all healthcare companies and it will show you all of them. And then you can filter it out or sort it out by the mark percent, you know, for the biggest losers and the gainers. Uh, what I like to do uh, pre-market as well as mid-market and, and post-market is I like to go to scan uh, and I like to set up my custom scanners. So for here is just the last price and the volume. You can set max to whatever you like or or what or however you want to do it. Of course, if it's pre-market, you don't expect a high volume, so you want to put this lower. And now I like to do percent change. You can always add more filters, or you know you can always delete the filters, and it will return you a good thing. So if we click scan right now, you can see that it shows all the stocks that are currently trending. Now down here is where I set my custom scanners uh, for real-time volume scanning. So I know which stock is going up or not. Uh, the best way to do this would be just to click add the gadget. And you can pick what you want right there. You can pick news. You can pick level two. Uh, it just appears on the left side. So make it work for you and make it comfortable for you and something that you can stick with. And on the top right here on messages, I have my alert set. There's no alerts right now, but when it does, it will pop up right here. And that's pretty much what I really like. You know, I like looking for the news and everything. And if I want to see a chart real quick, like uh, let's say we want to look at GoPro, you know, it will show me GoPro. And of course, I like want to change the time frame. Usually, I start I start by looking at the five day to see how the trend is moving. I identify support and a resistance, and then I want to see how the stock is moving up and down. Um, you can draw on it by just clicking on this thing right here and then you can pick the two that you want to draw your own trend lines and analyze it. Uh, we can also narrow it down. Of course, these are all preset, but you know, here's like the five minute chart and many more. So make it comfortable for you and uh, use it to your, to your full extent, you know. Uh, if you're using the Thinkorswim platform um, as well as for, for brokerage, you can buy or sell directly right here. So uh, this is for 4S, but you know you can change it to um, to futures. You can do active traders. You know you can do products. You can do a bunch of things, and that's what I really like about it. Another thing that I use it for that I really love is the news. So I can type in any ticker like GoPro right now, and I just double click it, and it'll show me all the news on why this stock is trending in this real time. If you set it up as real time. And you can see exactly why why the stock is going up or is going down. And you can see a lot of catalyst reports directly right here. Uh, you know, like same thing if you type in like Amazon. You know, you can see uh, all the news that is directly up here. And remember, you see the time is updated immediately. On the right side, I like having my level two out. So I know exactly what the bid is, what people are buying for and what people are selling for. That tells me whether or not I should get into trade. Now, when it comes to studies, my white line is the VRAP, and then I have my SMAs on these two other lines. So we zoom in, we'll get you a better picture of how it looks like. And the bottom right here is just volume bar. You don't have to have it overlap. You can fix this by right clicking, going in style, uh, settings, and then you can choose to overlap the volume or not. So it's up to you. Uh, however you want to do it. I just feel that it looks more comfortable for me here and I like working with this. The only downside about using Thinkorswim as a, a charting platform is that when I make my trades, I still have to go back to eTrade Pro, which I have to off tab and sometimes my orders don't get filled. But aside from that, I love this platform. It allows me to do post-market uh, post research and I can add stuff to my watch list. You know, like I have a, a small ETF watch list down here. And then my volume scanner, my real time tells me a lot of stuff that allows me to um, make a lot better trades. So you can also look at the time sales right here by clicking some of these tabs. So right here, it will pop up the time and sales on the right side. Uh, that will allow you to see what people are buying and selling. I don't need it right now, so I don't have it and I prefer to stick with my charts. Um, and I just use the level two. But again, make it work for you. You know, you don't have to have the news feed. You can just type in the news by setting it up a gadget on the left. And you can type in any type of ticker and it will return you the news. So that's the way I do it. I like using it for the scan, you know, to filter things out. Um, definitely the market watch to see what is trending, what is going on. I can go by top 10 NASDAQ. Um, 
you know, and it'll show me what is going on with the NASDAQ. Since I only trade NASDAQ and NYSE, you know, I don't really do OTC stocks. And uh, with the scan, it allows me to filter down the price. So I only want to trade stocks that are, let's say, it's under 750. And I can scan for that. And it'll show the gain, show the ask, the bid, um, the volume index, and many more. Because if there's no volume, I don't want to be trading it. Well, that's the way I use it. Um, and then uh, that's pretty much it. You know, you can sign up for this for free. You download it for free. Just go straight to Thinkorswim platform. Costs zero dollars. If you're already using Thinkorswim as a brokerage, then you might as well use the platform as well. Um, yeah, this is probably one of the best charting tools out there. And I've tried all the other ones. Like I said, there's almost downsides to every single one. Uh, but this one just beats all the downsides, especially with everything for free. So that's my review. I like it and that's how I set up my chart. I hope this video helped all you guys to uh, gain some insights on how to use Thinkorswim. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. You can always follow me on Twitter at Wilson 8